Hey everybody, this is Jerichos, and welcome to my brand new Let's Play. I'm playing Outland. This is a fantastic platformer from Housemark. It will have an interesting mechanic in it, which I'm not really going to get into just yet, but it will remind a lot of people of Ikaruga, or games like that, if they've ever played them. Now, this does have some online cooperative stuff. We're not really going to be getting into that because it's just... There's not much content there. It's not really worth checking out. The single player game is what we're going to be focusing on. And, as usual, I'm going to be showing you how to find everything in the game. That's right. So, we're going to launch right into the story and let's see what happens. If you listen... I will tell you of a man, lost in his world, haunted by dreams of legend. Medicine could not help him. Visions drove him on. A shaman, he sought, a teacher, and a mystic. The Pal Kaaba, who could make sense of these visions, who would heal him. He found the seer, collapsed at his fireside, and listened as he was told the ancient truth. Stories of a great wheel endlessly turning. Of two sisters who helped make the world. And then sought to shatter it. Imprisoned by a hero, a soul waiting through the ages, eager to be reborn. His time has come again, but so has theirs, and the earth trembles in fear. So right off the bat, we've got a doomsday story some evil twin sister goddesses who destroyed or created the world then tried to destroy it and apparently we are now the legendary hero being reborn so not too exciting at the moment considering we can't even attack all we can do is jump around i kind of love the art style though of the just the shadowy silhouette but with some highlighting of colors now this is a platformer, first and foremost, so run and jump, and we got our first collectible, a Mark of the Gods. The more you collect, the more special little bonuses you unlock. It's going to take a while to find them all, but we will get every one of them. Also, energy in this game is harmful. It says the raw energies of creation, light and dark. Blue are the energies of creation, and of light, and red are of dark. So... Whoop, missed it. Basically, any of that will hurt us. But first, jump over here to get another hidden Mark of the Gods. And we got some concept art. Yeah, you get concept art as you unlock more and more of it. And I will go ahead and show you. If you press the select button, you can, or back, or whichever button it is on your console, you can pull up the map. It's kind of neat because it shows you your recent path, which way you've been moving. Shows you where your objective is, locked doors, all sorts of stuff like that. World map, which isn't really a map so much as a hub of location lists. And now this is interesting. We get lots of abilities, and you can track how many Mark of the Gods or money bases, which I'll show you what those are in a minute, are in each stage. So you can check and see, oh, I'm missing something in this stage if you want to collect everything. And already we got another thing to learn. Checkpoints. If you die, they'll come back here. And guiding light. These little floating butterfly light things, they'll guide you on to your next objective if you ever get lost. Pretty nice. So we've got right here. Oh, what is this? It's a switch. Just step on it. That's all it takes to activate it. And right away, the first locked door's open. Yeah, it starts out pretty simple. It's going to get a bit more complex as we go, but for now it's pretty easy to follow along. Just avoid the dangerous stuff, don't drop in those spike pits. 
Okay, now that is a money vase. We can't do anything with it yet. We'll come back here. And ride the platform up. Now here's a cool little one. Sometimes when you step on them, they just start moving on their own as long as you're stepping on them. So maybe you have to jump or any number of interesting mechanics to get moving. Keep following the shiny light and we get our first little temple here. We get something special. Melee attack, yeah, we had to get an upgrade to actually attack. So you can attack with the X button, you can do a low swipe, you can do an uppercut, and we can break through barriers. So this is our bread and butter, our most basic uh, utility. Also, these are hearts. You can see in the top left we have three hearts. Well, we've got full health, so you can break it apart to get money. If you ever have full health, you want to do that, because trust me, you need a lot of money in this game. But, if you're ever damaged, you can use a heart to refill the health. You also saw our first enemy, a giant ant. Eh, creepy. With one giant eye. The nice thing is, uppercuts on most enemies will stun them. So you can knock them in the air and then just wail on them mercilessly. Yeah, sounds a little mean, but ooh, miss him by a, just a fraction. I love uppercutting them into the air and then doing a two-hit combo in the air. I say that and then I fail to do it. Okay, now I'm gonna hit this to the left rather than the right so the money doesn't go falling down the pit, but this is a money vase as we said. It gives you one big money piece and a bunch of little ones. Remember, you want all the money you can get, so break every one of those. There we go, you can die. Ha ha! And it's broken up into sections since you saw the map. We've finally completed the first one and found everything in the first one so far. A lot of stages, because this is a Metroidvania style game, you're gonna have to come back after you've gotten some upgrades to find everything. Don't expect to clear them all the first time through. Yeah, we can uppercut. Yes, game, I'm doing it right now. I know about that. Granted, uppercutting, if you kill them this way, gives you a little bit more money, actually. Oop, money's fallen. And... Oop, wrong way. Now, you'll see here... We've got this semi-transparent platform we can't stand on that for later. We're going to deal with that in time. And if we try to go up, all we get is some enemies and some vases. Eh, more money. Not going to complain. But first, we cannot slip through this little platform. You can crouch, but you can't move while crouching, so we'll have to come back for that mark later. Now here is a prime opportunity to get our first achievement. All right. Got him! Environmental Exterminator. That's for killing an enemy with spikes. Also, we took a bit of damage, so you get to see the, you know, power of life. It heals us. I like it says, find it within the world or within your enemies. So, let's just keep running. Don't stop moving or those spikes will get... And we've got a few little projectors here. This is a common trend you're going to see in the game of little spots that spew out energy beams. Well, energy particles, really. Does it behave as a particle or a beam? <laughs> okay, nerdy joke. And we've already got our second ability, slide. This is exactly what you think it is. Let's you slide under spots. Of course, we can't go back the way we came, so no choice but to move on. Now, unfortunately, since these guys are cheaters, the energies of creation don't harm them. I know, totally unfair. Now, we've got the pathway up top is where it's telling us to go, but if you look at the map, down to the bottom is a dead end. So... 
We want to go down this way. Actually, first we want to kill you. Ha <laughs> ha! And now, we go down at this fork here. We can go to a little optional area. Maybe find a collectible or two. Slide under, jump over, and kill the enemies. Simple as that. Also, the slide does kill enemies. Well, I mean, it does a little tiny bit of damage. But mostly, it stuns them. Yeah, I just want to keep... There we go. Haha. <laughs> it basically does one slash worth of damage and stuns them. It's very useful. You may not have noticed we actually got a Mark of the Gods there. So, let's hop back up. Keep on running. We can do it. I'm actually kind of impressed. I've only taken one hit of damage so far, which, trust me, that's going to change. This game actually gets kind of hard at points. All right, give me that money. Sweet, sweet money. And a ooh, big open room. Okay, sometimes enemies can give you those big um, coins. Those are the most important things. Make sure you grab them. Trust me, they're worth a lot. And... Okay. Now, it wants us to go to the right. Eh, you know what? We'll do that. Let's jump to the right. And this is a different type of switch. Instead of stepping on it, you have to hit this type of switch. Opens the door. We're not done with this area, though. We do not want to leave yet. Instead, jump to the left. And we're back up here where we came down before. Okay, now an interesting point. You can cling to walls, but you can't hold there forever. So, after about a second, you drop down. But now, we've got slides so we can get this Mark of the Gods. And I'll make out a point here with these statistics. You'll see we're missing a money vase. We can't get that yet. I'll tell you the perfect time to come back and get each collectible and when we can complete an area. But for now, we're just going to progress onward grabbing everything we can to start. And Crossroads of the World. Yeah, the first word is the region, if you will. And then the second title is what the specific area or room you're in is. Launch skill. Yeah, we're not going to get that for a while. We'll come back. For now, just slide on down the, uh, I was about to say the stairs, the ladder, and we got a big door here. You know why? Because it's a big hub area. And what's happening here? Something special. 30,000 years ago. Fall back through time. Become the ancient hero. Let his spirits, dark and light, arm you in this final battle. Okay, so we got something ominous going on here. I love the art in this game of these, you know, this little flash card here with that drawing. And we're playing as the ancient hero from thousands and thousands of years ago. So he's actually got some, you know, he's a different color. He's got the powers of darkness in him right now. We're climbing up. I love the world, like, falling to ruin in the background. But, go higher. It wants us to go left. I don't think so. We're going right. And getting some money. Yeah, although this is back in the past, because it's, you know, like a lucid dream that he's having, we keep the money. Now, here is the core mechanic of the game besides platforming. The spirit energy. You press the RB button, or R1, to switch between spirits. Channeling light or dark spirit allows you to use items aligned with that spirit and to resist the spirit's energies. So, remember we saw that blue platform that was... Well, you can switch back and forth between the powers here. And you can only stand on platforms that match your color. So, now that the red one's solid, we can get here. Then, jump up to the blue one. There we go. Do we actually have a map of this area? Yeah, we do. Okay. And here's what they also said. Resist the elements. If you touch the red as blue, it will hurt you. But switch to red, doesn't affect you at all. So, again, that's kind of why I compared this game to Ikaruga at points. 
So now we move on and we get a little bit of platforming with, you know, some tricks. Y you already told us that game. But we have an enemy here. If you're red, you cannot hurt him. It does nothing. But switch to blue and you can actually deal damage. Alright. Hop, hop on up. Okay, jump over him because honestly it's better than trying to deal with switching to red and avoiding the blue beam. And move on. Oh, some of these guys in red. Oh, I love the statues up there. They're kind of cool looking and ominous. Now, this one's not too bad. It's just a little bit of timing platforming. Keep riding from one to the next. There we go. I kind of love that semi-invisible shield that forms around you. We're making it up. Not doing too bad. This is kind of a taste of what's to come. Break all that apart. And jump switch. And switch one more time. You're going to have to get used to switching on the fly because there's going to be some tough platforming later. Oh, new enemy. Little dragon enemy. Kind of spews um, energy at you. And I'm dropping down because there's some money down here. Yes. You will give me all your gold. And we already got almost 20,000. That's not too bad. Now, move onward. Just avoid these guys. Avoid the spikes. Yeah. I did not realize he was there at first, which is funny because being blue, he kind of shows up a lot. And another money vase just past the switch. Now, that is all three money bases in this area. I'm going to tell you something. This is the only area with a true missable in the game. Not really a spoiler, but since this is a dream, you don't come back to this area. So if you want those three money bases, you need to grab them now. Money bases don't technically count toward any achievements. Not in and of themselves, but they make it easier to get more money. So you want those. So you can't truly miss any achievements ever, but if you are a completionist like me and you want everything, make sure to grab all three of those money bases before leaving this area. Now I love this. Now that we're going back, suddenly everything's active again. So it's a good idea to time it, wait for the red to be gone, and just jump through there. Now I could go down below, but I don't want to. It's kind of neat, these interchangeable, or not interchangeable, um, intermingled, uh, particle attacks. So, I could go down below just to bypass it, but that seemed like the cheap and easy way out. Anyway, we're done with this little area. It's time for the sisters, yep. Yeah. The massive showdown between good and evil, or man and goddesses. I, I don't know, I'm babbling. But can I say, I love this giant ladder that you climb up to the heavens. It's so ridiculous. But, as we near the top, wait do you see what awaits us. So cool looking. And... That's it. Yeah, you don't get to fight them now. What are you, kidding me? That's just a little preview, if you will. The hero's journey ended. Ancient spirits release their grasp. And you awake just a man. Surely it was a dream. <laughs> Surely. D just a dream. Not, you know history that's going to repeat itself. And I love this, you know, little clockwork looking thing. This will require... I don't have yet. Oh yeah, and as I showed, you can look at the map. Thanks game, I already explained that earlier. 
Also, we got a switch here that's color coordinated. You have to use the dark spirit to operate the button. Now, despite the dream, we don't actually have the spirits. Maybe we'll get those as we go along. Huh, got a horizontal door there. Well, nothing we can do about that, so it's time to get out of here. And we enter a new area, the jungle. So, you can see there we've, you know, Origins Crossroads of the World is that center area. You can't reach everywhere else from there. But we're in the jungle now. So, let's go ahead and just, well, start killing some stuff. There we go. Now, I'll tell you this, the game auto-saves when you change rooms. There's not really save points, per se, but anytime you change areas, that's when the game updates and saves. Can't believe I just jumped down to the floor chasing two doubloons. Well, what can I say? I want the money. Alright, we're doing good. Just don't stand in one place too long when spikes are under you. Here we go. Not too bad. Oh, big one. Now, the nice thing is, if they're stunned, touching them does not hurt. It's a simple thing, but it's kind of nice. There we go. Okay, you. Get out of my way. You didn't... I did not give you permission to get up and move around again. All right. And... Yeah, we're down in this little part here. This should open up that door we were stuck at right up there. Pretty cool. Move onward and... Oop. Don't want to avoid that. I missed a coin? Huh. I'll ride this little elevator back on up. Come on. A little faster. Thank you. And here... You'll actually, if you look at the very top of the screen, you can see there's a Mark of the Gods up there, but we can't get up to it. Well, we might have to approach it from a different angle. There we go. Head over to the right, and... Oh, kill the heart. Just drop down. Another piece of concept art. Probably take a look at the concept art later. Just, you know, show it off. Probably when we have it all as one little bonus at the very end. Anyway, head on up. Another locked door, but I think we can find a way to break through that. Another reason I like doing the uppercut and then jumping to attack them is because it cancels the animation of the uppercut so you can just kill them a little quicker. Ooh, and money base. Kind of cut it a little close there with the, with the attack. All right, we're doing good. Yeah, you, you could platform between, but it's easier just to run underneath. And we've got another little bonus area down here. Whoop. Come here, buddy. Yeah. You don't care about dying, do you? Ooh, another big one. Okay. Here we go. Three hits and they're gone. Just always remember that. Got to make sure you have enough time to get that in before they attack you. Or before, you know, something else hits you. These guys, of course, only two. Eh, I won't worry about that one. Yeah. Okay. Another nice thing about the uppercut is it launches the coins kind of upward instead of outward. So it can be a little easier to collect them sometimes. Got it. Okay, avoid these. Not too hard. I want to kill everyone. Mass genocide. Okay, that's not really something to joke about, but anyway, we got something interesting up here. This statue looks a little out of place. That's because this is a health upgrade. We've got 34,000 doubloons, and it costs... Okay, it went away. Uh, well, it costs 15,000. So, purchase an upgrade. Hey, extra health. Pretty nice. And head over here. Oop. Enemy. There we go. Don't want to mess with We're doing good. Don't drop down that little pit there because you will have to go back through that platforming. For now, though, hit the switch.
And how are we doing on collectibles in this stage? Well, we're missing one money vase. Drop down here. Nice little shortcut back down. And checkpoint. All right, now here, just, it's a good idea to use the, oh, I was gonna say use the ladders to safely descend slowly. Apparently, I did not obey my own instructions. Right, drop down, you are just gonna die. Go. Yeah, we're doing good. Careful, because you do slide down really fast. And there we go. And I missed the money base. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back in the area right underneath where the first or where the mark of the gods was. And I can't believe I missed this. If you look right to the left, it's kind of hidden. There's a hidden area that you have to break the wall. That's where the le uh, that first actually money base of the area is. So nice little collectible there. Now we've got everything in the area. And let's go back on to the end of the room. Made it back. Only got hit once because I missed the ladder. Oh well. Anyway, go through the door. What's our next area? The Cursed Forest. Yes, I'm saying cursed. I don't care. So, kind of an interesting area here. But, that's where we're leaving off our first episode. Next time, we're going to explore the Cursed Forest and maybe see if we can't find some more upgrades, some other cool stuff, and eventually figure out what our role in this whole crazy story is. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.